Hey everybody, it's Derek Mazzoni, and today we're going to spend a little bit of time in Estonia, a beautiful country with a strong tradition of saunas, and you know how much I love saunas, I really do. Um, interesting cuisine, and also we had uh, Trad Attack a little while ago, which also did some great work. I'm here with Marco and Ramo of the band Pulup, who I've been playing quite a bit. How's life? Marco. Well, we're at Womax, so life is great, of course. Ramo. Nice. Hello. Thank you for doing this interview, and nice to be here. Okay. So, um, I'm a big fan of uh, your music, and I've been at Womax for a little bit, and everybody says, like, hey, you guys are a great band. You put on a great show. It's not like something you're just like out there playing. You're actually engaging in a really powerful way. What inspires you to uh, to put out all of this energy when you're performing? Well, I guess everybody tries to put out all their energy, and it's just uh, well, everybody does it the way they they feel more comfortable. And uh, over the years, we have started to do the shows the way we do, and uh, there is probably no um no conception behind it when we started we just did, uh, did it. it's just a natural process for us and it has developed into something that we do now and we're just very very happy and uh, uh, glad that people enjoy it and uh, we enjoy the the um, dialogue with the audience and uh, we enjoy to see different reactions not all different reactions but <laughs> but mostly so it's uh, and uh, tomorrow we're going to perform um, at a stage which is mostly for dancing and uh, quite loud and uh, uh, 11 p.m. people are already in a party mode so maybe a little bit less talking uh, than we would do in a intimate uh, set uh, venue so more 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 boom boom. <laughs> More boom boom. Okay, you're talking about the dialogue you have with the audience. What is that dialogue? Well, of course, there is always a dialogue when you are a musician. You see the reaction if people come or go or, or they smile or clap. Uh, but we also uh, talk uh, in between songs, and uh, which is, of course, so something that folk musicians a lot uh, do mostly. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we try to create some uh some special feeling or uh, or or narrative or i don't know some some understanding of what we are actually what is happening on the stage uh, through these small stories between the songs or introductions of the texts and uh, and we try to be well it it's it happens to be uh, it's quite playful sometimes yes so uh, people um, have started to enjoy these uh, these talks and uh, and um you guys have good stage presence. Yeah, well, we, when we are on the stage, we have two dark suits and uh, traditional instruments, and we sit on the chair, and it looks quite conservative, maybe even boring at the first glance. So we try to we we in, we love love to to work with these uh, um, contrasts that actually the lyrics are not that serious, and and uh, also the the texts and also the the movements or some small elements of uh, choreography that we use uh, are not so serious and then there is a this contradiction between the, the black suit and, uh, and sitting playing traditional instrument and doing the things that we do and I think that's one of the keys uh, that people have enjoyed. Yeah, as we play everything on the stage, we use looper and uh, the, the, the very often the, the situation uh, somehow telling us a little bit uh, of the mood of the songs also. Sometimes the same song in an uh, intimate i i situation is my, a bit uh, has a slower tempo and, and with, when, it's, when it's boom boom method then it comes a bit more faster and something like this. It's also the dialogue of how the, which, which audience there are. Little bit yes, the, the audience influences the, the way the songs uh, Sound definitely also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, who was the one who's like doing all this work with the looper for, throughout history? Ramo, how did this come about? How did you suddenly become the looper master? Uh, no, I, I started by solo 
um, 90s, middle of 90s, and uh, in the beginning of 2000, I started to use Looper in my shows. And uh, I, of course, then I didn't play this this instrument, our Tal Harp, our traditional instrument. I played only guitar, mandolin, bass guitar, flutes, block flutes. Uh, only. Only, yeah. And uh, yeah. then uh, I fall in love to this instrument. Of course, I played by Looper, by my solo. And uh, I somehow, when we started to make our pool band, uh, it worked even much better way or more kind of <laughs> working mm-hmm. working way to to use same looper with both of because Marco knows when looper recording when it's over dubbing Marco knows all the time when we are recording both instruments that are same same time and 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 it goes very mm, easy and natural way there so it's not hard to what I do there. It's, it's all live looping. It's so it's all live looping. Yeah. yeah. So we're at Womax right now. First of all, thank you. Can you can we see that instrument that you fell in love with? John, will you grab that? Pulup. What is pulup? Tell me more about the, the definition of pulup. Yeah, because first three letters pu means tree or wood in Estonian language. Mm-hmm. Loop <coughs> comes from looper, one loop. So it's kind of wooden looping because we have wooden instruments and uh, and and looping, yeah. All right, that's a great name. So we're at Womex. Lots of countries, lots of artists representing those countries, playing different types of music. Uh, sometimes it's traditional, sometimes it's a fusion, sometimes it's completely um, its own thing. You know, it could be, you don't know what country it's from. It's an interesting place to be here in Womex. You're from Estonia, a very old country, but a very new country all at the same time. How, what's your relationship with your with your country and the music that you're presenting? We just happen to be from Estonia, or are you like, well, this is a part of our heritage or our culture or the future of that? I'm giving you a lot of space to answer, so please, I hope you can you can uh, fill that space. The instrument uh, talharpa, <coughs> it uh, it actually it was so almost uh, dead. Yeah, nobody played it for a, for a while. It uh, it started to die out in the end of 19th century. In, and um, before that, it was played on uh, mostly in the, on the western Estonia, especially on one island that was inhabited by Estonian Swedes. So uh, it is mainly Estonian Swedish tradition, but also some Estonians who lived in this area they also played it. So it's um, and so it was not uh, at least in 19th century it was not widespread uh, all over Estonia, and then it uh, started to die out and. Uh, Nobody played it, so that's the reason we, we call our style zombie folk also, but, uh, because now it's living again. Uh, so if you want to, uh, if, if, if we would like to be theoretical or start to discuss about whether it's a national tradition or something no, or not, we have, we have had these uh, debates with Ramo, whether it is a national instrument, a national uh, like folk mu- traditional music of Estonia, or should we say that it's a... Uh, more, more something to do with this local identity of uh, Western Estonia, and especially Wormsi Island. Also, the instrument was played uh, in Karelia in Finland. But these were just the periphery, uh, like both were very peripheral areas, and that's why they played it that long. That's why it, it stayed there alive for a long time. Before that, it was probably more, much more widespread, definitely. But uh, uh, yeah, so uh, our mission is to popularize this instrument. Uh, and um, this is actually the main reason why we are here and why we are like in, in this world music scene or why we are invited to world music, ethnic, uh, traditional folk music events. Um, because the music that we play, it's, it's not that folk uh, or that world uh, or that traditional at all. Whatever that means. Whatever that means, yeah. So it's, it's my, our own music. We, we sometimes make small references to the two traditional tunes or traditional songs. But this is not the main main focus at all. We just express ourselves as the tradition was dead, and nobody could can tell us that we are doing something wrong or this was not the, this is not the right way to play it or something. So uh, we are in this uh, nice position where where uh, both the very purists who who want to keep the tradition alive they say that our mission is okay or, or good because we popularize the dead instrument and and also we can 
get to the, into into like into the audience who is not listening folk music at all or this kind of so because we very often perform at very very different types of festivals. That's cool. So you're continuing. Are you teaching? Are you looking at the next generation who might want to pick this up? Because if you bring this back to life, which is beautiful, the zombie, um, but it's, you know, you don't want it to stop with you. So what are your thoughts on, on the next step? I mean, this is a conversation I'm having with a lot of artists here. You know, Womix has been around for a while and it's like, okay, where are the kids? What's the, what's the next thing? There are already next generation which is teaching it in Estonia and then it's somehow growing. Exactly, this forums in the island, the, what Marco was talking about, there in the school, uh, all kids can learn this instrument. They, they made for a, uh, a special, a bit shorter, smaller instruments for kids, and then it's somehow growing. And uh, and all, all the time, every year, comes more, more and more people comes to the camps, and then uh, again, new Tal people. Camps. Tal Harpa camps. Yeah, yeah. What kind of camps? The, the camps where you uh, people who are Ladies. addicted to this instrument or instrument. <laughs> you have camps yes. where people come and just play that instrument. Yes, that's interesting. Yes. Tell me more about you these are, camps. You're all, wel you're all welcome to to join these yes, camps. Yes. There are two camps in uh, Estonia. One is winter February in Viljandi, which is folk various folk music center. Mm -hmm. Another is, is forums in the island in summer. Both are very, very nice camps. Okay, so as, as I talked about before, Estonia is an old country, an ancient language, and um, what are you guys adding to the Estonian narrative, musically, culturally? You know, what this is th this is super important because we're not getting a lot of Estonian artists. You know, there's been a few, um, and once you step into a place like Womex, you're like, okay, here we are. This is. This is our Estonia. This is who we are. Who, what is that? Not our um, main task is to think about uh, uh, what we have to say about Estonia. Of course, we, we know that we are uh, representing it, but uh, we have to be, I think, uh, first of all, we have to be honest as artists and, uh, and present our, our thoughts as artists. And we are, we are happy that uh, we can uh, popularize this instrument. Uh, very often after our shows, uh, people come and say that now they want to visit Estonia and uh, we make fun of it when we talk about it. We, um, for the foreign audiences very, very often we, we describe Estonia in between songs like because some songs are connected with, uh, uh, with some Estonian traditions and we are not very, absolutely very serious about it uh, but uh, it's, it's working uh, in a good way. So, yeah. You guys are representing, that's beautiful. If I could talk about Estonia, it's simply it's cool, uh, dark, uh, grey uh, in a, all most of the year is uh, clouds and raining and cool and snowing sometimes some snow smelting. Land itself is uh, mm, not peak but uh, quite peak that uh, there are there are one million people, which half of this population living in capital city. So most of the land is empty, people are alone there very easily and uh, going to the cross-country skiing in the winter time and, and singing and sauna and singing and uh, cross-country skiing. And, and if you add some uh, Puluk music in between these uh, sentences, yes. then people start to get interested in this, yes. in this country for some reason. But, but the um, um, Estonia is in, you know, it's, it's a country that's got an interesting history right now. It's got a technology uh, sector. It's been doing um, uh, music export and import. Uh, you know, a lot of artists we've had been invited to uh, the Music Week to to explore that. So there, there feels like there is a, um, a uh, progressive government, progressive mindset around this. I'm curious, like, what is it that makes Estonia and in some ways so different than um, than some of the other its neighbors let's say Latvia Lithuania what is the what is the essence that's that's that brought you here I think uh, of course it's a very broad topic but uh, if, we, if we talk specifically about uh, world music then um, uh, for world music the you, the most important um, institution uh, is uh, or, or there are a couple of institutions that are around Viljandi Folk Music Festival and uh, that started uh, over 30 years ago uh, and just after we uh, regained our independence 
and it completely uh, redefined uh, the way we understand uh, and what is world like folk or world or ethnic music and it's very very successful in a way that um, if you go to Vilandi Folk Music Festival uh, third week of uh, or the last week of July yes every year uh, you will be surprised to see how many young people there are like there are of course the festival is huge for Estonia it's uh, uh, 25,000 uh, people but very many young teenagers in their 20s and and, and also older people so all generations and um, we are we are even shocked when we come out from Estonia like the folk musicians come out from Estonia and see witness that actually in the west uh, the audience is much older and you don't see so many young people the way uh, this um, this folk or, or traditional or, or world music has in has been incorporated into also popular culture or pop music in Estonia it has been for for this uh, music scene very successful so it's it's not uh, not a niche uh, in Estonia. If you like, even we uh, we we do cooperations with uh, with with pop artists, and uh, and um, we've been invited to mainstream shows. And so it's um, if you are at, at least a little bit interested in this type of music, please uh, come and uh, check the Vilandi Folk Music Festival. We don't work there. <laughs> we are not officially, but uh, we kind of feel that. Uh, um, and always when artists come, they are really surprised that you can really have this uh, uh, rock, uh, old, good old rock festival vibe there. We, like uh, uh, we've done stage diving in Vilna, the folk music festival, because <laughs> it's it's just this energy that uh, uh, not not so many world music festivals can can uh, can say that they have. So we are lucky that we have this organization uh, uh, also. This Vilandi Folk Music Festival, it's not only a festival, but the whole year they are, have different events and uh, they're doing research. And, and uh, But uh, before that, uh, the, the heritage or the tradition of, uh, of um, uh, studying folklore, folklore is also very rich. So uh, from, the, from the end of 19th century, there we have been uh, uh, gathering uh, folklore, uh, songs, stories and... and and other heritage, so that there is a massive uh, archive of, uh, of folklore. So if you're really interested in Estonian tradition, like uh, that happened in or what people were singing 100 years ago, uh, it's very easy. You can go to archives and, and, and find it. Marco, let's talk about hopes and dreams. We have officially defined our hopes and dreams to continue the, uh, living the lifestyle of uh, rock and roll. Uh, with the help of our uh, ancient uh, Talharpa, so. okay. mm -hmm. but without drugs. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. We like to we like to make our own music. We like to play it. We like to travel around the world to 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 play these concerts, and uh, we would love like we like to make new music, and 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 that's it. If it's if it's possible, then it's very very okay. Very very happy with it's if it's if it's, if it's working. Yeah. Yeah, we feel privileged that we have this possibility now, yes. and yes. we hope it will exactly. continue. Exactly. What's the big surprise? Uh, like, if you were to come back and go, like, "Wow, I didn't expect that." For me, it is that I am I'm a musician because I I, I didn't expect to become one. Uh, I, I what did you expect to become? I thought I will become a social anthropologist. I I I I, and then I started to play this instrument as a hobby, and then I met Ramo and. And in every year, this uh, my identity is uh, kind of uh, s switched, and now I'm mostly known as. Well, I've been even given lectures uh, with Ramo in universities uh, or like workshops, very good universities that I would never have done when as an anthropologist. So, so <laughs> that's much better. There's way too many social anthropologists in the world. There's not enough pull up in the world. Yeah. I'm, I, don't, I don't have anything to add, add for this. You got it. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is your time. I, I told already that uh, it's it's very very. I'm very happy when I can do this long. That that uh, continue to make new music. I, I I love to make new songs, new tunes, new new way to do it and and uh, find it maybe some other possibilities and travel and and live with this. This is very very privileged situation when you can live what you like to do. So it's perfect.
Okay, so I got to ask you, Estonia is a technologically driven country. There's a lot of stuff there going on. People are, there's a bunch of um, uh, uh, pop-ups going on. And so uh, I want to ask you guys a question that's been on my mind and it's been going all over Womix. The music industry is in a completely different state right now. Records, what is that? Um, visual, video is more important than music, some would say, or a combination. People's attention spans are tiny, but and they, sometimes they go longer, sometimes they go shorter. And there's a new way, a new delivery, a new, a new um, system to get your music out, to get people to understand this. Streaming has been difficult, but also streaming has opened everything up, and people have access to anything. Knowing this, and knowing where you're from, you know, how do you? What do you want to do with this in knowing that this is the world? It's like it's, it's not like Pulup's going to get into a whole bunch, going to sell a bunch of uh, CDs or vinyl or something like that. We, we have last year, with our last record, we, we sold most CDs in Estonia. We got this, I don't know how many thousand, but quite many. Uh, and for, a, for a very small country, it's a, it's a lot. So. Every every show that we have um, after show we sell CDs or vinyls. No, I, I love that, but I'm thinking of you guys for export. I understand that within within Estonia you guys are doing great and there's a support. The problem is that also abroad we we do sell them very well. <laughs> no, it's not not like I'm an idiot then. Okay. Not like millions. No, you know, it's a quite exception. I understand uh, your question is very very of course very right, and we are maybe not using or not um, not using that way that well all the digital possibilities um, uh, we do have uh, uh, a, a luck to be able to do cooperation with a very good uh, film maker who is doing uh, videos for us he's uh, actually here Tavi Arus Munchhausen cinema so he has done uh, very very nice uh, great uh, music videos and uh, and uh, uh, but uh, if you have any good suggestions, uh, we are open we, because we, we are not we are not so good at social media. But, uh, but I think we manage. Now I think it's just interesting because of this this instrument and what you're doing and what you're representing. There's an opportunity there, and um, I'd have to think on a little bit. But I'm just wondering how you know. I keep going back to this question. You're Estonian. You're here right now. There's a lot of Estonians here. We got an insane amount of Colombians and a whole bunch of Spaniards and Chileans and Koreans, etc. You guys are representing Estonia, and there's this opportunity now. You don't have to like wait for a television station to cover you or something like that. Here is YouTube. You have just as much right to be there as anybody else. It's, there's the, the gatekeepers are gone. Yeah, I I I, <coughs> I wanted to tell about uh, this how the. Music business is changing to, uh, through this uh, digitalization or uh, like um, internet uh, growing uh, everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's going faster, more to bigger files, better quality all the time, step by step. It's not very, it's very natural. It's it's uh, it has happened during the music industry all all the time. It's it's growing, changing, and coming new methods, new ways, new. Uh, possibilities and and it's very very okay. I, this is what we we wanted <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And but of course, it's uh, always surprising when you are somewhere in like, for example, in Vancouver and uh, and start to do sound check somewhere at the open air in a, for a small audience because we expect nobody to know us there. And then somebody comes and says that I just passed by, I heard a familiar song, and it appears that he has been listening us. Uh, in Spotify, not knowing that we are, will be there or something. So this is not something very unexpected, very not orchestrated and very warm feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, uh, this can happen. No, I totally agree. Um, but even within a context of a looper, looper right now is kind of analog ancient technology in the space right now. So you're, you're working with this instrument, you've got this traditional background and you're, you're presenting this in a really um, almost, I don't want to say folky, but folkloric kind of way, yeah. and reinterpreting. There's a performance aspect, there's, you know, we, we have seen your work, you're doing festivals, you guys have a unique perspective on this. The fact that you're using this ancient instrument 
Is there something about that instrument that speaks to like a ancient Estonian or Swedish Estonian um, um, symbology? I'm going to go into social anthropology with you again. Is like, is this the thing like what a Kora would be to Mali and Senegal, a, a Jin would be in China or uh, Samishen in Okinawa? Um, is there some aspect of that that like speaks to the identity? Okay, I think it's not for the whole Estonia. Uh, but for definitely for the island of Wormsey, which has only a few hundred people living on it now, but there used to be uh, two, three thousand before the war. Uh, it's growing now. <laughs> My father lives there, but <laughs> Estonian knows these instruments step by step more and more, and it comes it comes little bit symbol of the Estonian folk, uh, one of the folk instruments now. If you go somewhere and we play our, our tunes in some some like in jam sessions and uh, people knew already, ah, oh, it's uh, Estonian or Finnish uh, traditional instrument, and uh, then some of these musicians knew the name. And in Estonia also, main mainly people starts to know step by step more and more and more. And I I think it will be like Kora, Kora or, or like something like this. Like it's not yet, but uh, yeah. Yes, but then you can also ask that, uh, <coughs> well, that's uh, not, a, not a good question, but uh, like, uh, if, uh, what's the, what's the, uh, how, is it more like Estonian than Finnish or, or Swedish or whatever? So it's because the majority of Estonia didn't play this instrument, uh, at least during the last centuries, uh, but now it's becoming more and more popular. And even be, we have been invited to play this instrument on an events uh, in southeast Estonia, where there is totally different tradition. We are happy to do it. Uh, we love this tradition also, but I can see that there is some sort of contradiction, like because you take from one local tradition something and then try to uh, brand it as a, as the whole Estonian instrument. Uh, it can work. Uh, it's okay. Uh, for we are doing it also, but uh, we have. I think it's important to know also where it comes from or where it to survive the longest and uh, what's that tradition. So, to to be informed. Mm. Speaking like a social anthropologist. Yes. yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> Ramo, Marco, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. I look forward to uh, having you guys play in uh, in the states and especially in Seattle. This will be fun. Cool. Cool. We'll come to Vancouver in the next 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 okay. summer. Yeah, so it's not that in far July. from Seattle. Yeah. Okay. It is and it isn't. It is far, but it is the border, and the border is a a real thing. Yeah. Not not for music. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You got it tuned with Pulup, reporting from Womix. Peace and love, y'all. Bye.